guys, we were just talking about we have our first uh, known cases of Omicron in the United States and California. The, the one person fully vaccinated did not get a booster yet, um, or maybe wasn't going to get a booster, I don't know. Um, but he was fully vaccinated. He has had very, very mild symptoms. The symptoms we have heard described primarily to Omicron so far by most is it's, 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 mild. it's easy to get, but it's mild. And you get a headache and you get uh, fatigue. Those, those are the two main things we're hearing so far. Now, you know, a lot of the South African health officials are saying that that's what they're seeing. Um, anecdotal reports of people that we know that have gotten it seem to fit that description. It's not to say that everybody will have a very super mild case, but right now it seems to be one of the milder forms of COVID-19 that we've seen so far. Joining us to talk about that and a whole lot more as it relates to all of this is Patty Olinger. Uh, she's an infectious disease expert here in Texas and the executive director of um, GBAC. Welcome back to the show, Patty. Have you have you tested negative? We can't let you on the show until we know you've tested negative for COVID. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, I'm fully vaccinated, boosted, and, and because I have attended a couple shows here recently um, where they required testing, I, I'm also negative. <laughs> well, that's good because that's the only way we can let you. According to the Biden administration, you have to be all those things, and then we're still going to put restrictions on you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna be a very interesting winter. I have a feeling. Oh, no kidding. Uh, what do you make of Omicron so far? What you've heard about it? I'm looking at a story here today that says that dozens of people in Norway who attended a work Christmas party have now tested positive for Omicron and are showing the same symptoms that, as I just described with that guy in California: um, headache, uh, body aches, uh, kind of the typical milder version of, uh, version of the flu. Yeah, and it, exactly. That's what we're hearing. Um, you know, we're still learning about Omicron. Uh, we did a, um, you know, a little what we call GBAC TV spot that on Omicron with Dr. John Lowe from University of Nebraska Medical Center and Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner yesterday. And what you're exactly right. We're seeing that. We don't know yet, you know, how infectious it is. Is, is it going to evade our vaccines that we currently have? There's a lot to be learned about this particular variant. Um, but it is a lesson to be learned that these variants are going to be popping up and we need to be prepared. You know, from, from what you know in the world of infectious diseases, are we not going down the same path that we probably have gone down historically with every flu that we've ever gotten? We're never going to get rid of COVID. It's something that's probably going to be around every year. But as it continues to evolve, the, the normal path for many viruses is that they're easier to get, but the symptoms are much more mild as time goes on. Yeah, well, when we look at the flu, exactly. If you look at the history of the flu, everybody, will, we're going to have you know, one of those really bad new novel flus that is going to wreak havoc on everything like 1918 flu did. And what we're, what, and, and that's really what we're worried about here with COVID as well. Uh, we are going to see more variants. It is so, you know, prevalent out there in the environment that it, you're absolutely right. We're, it's going to be with us for a long time, maybe forever. And it's, it's then one of those things that how do we need to, what do we need to do to live with this situation, keep businesses open, and then, you know, um, you know how can we protect our, ourselves, our families, and our communities? Yeah, it, it, it looks like, it looks like yeah, even some of the more liberal politicians on these types of things it, it maybe had enough of lockdowns. I, I'm glad to hear that that's the case. If nothing else, I think they're looking towards Europe. And they're seeing what's going on there where they're trying to lock people back down again. And people are actually rioting in the streets. And they're realizing that people have had enough of that. That that, 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 that doesn't do any good. It ultimately will come back again. It will continue to evolve and it will continue to come back. This is something we need to learn to live with. I, I, you know, I've been an advocate of let's figure out how we stay open because when you start affecting economies you start affecting people's you know health and livelihood and um you can have other you know very detrimental ramifications seen and as we know um if we don't learn to live with this 
Yeah, one of the things I think one of the uh, I think when history looks back at this, I think one of the uh, unfortunate side effects is, is going to be the amount of people that didn't go to see their physicians uh, during this whole COVID thing, especially during the first year and a half when when things were really kind of locked down, um, and and how many cases of cancer and and other things will have been missed until it's too late because people just weren't getting their normal checkups. Oh, yeah, and, and we're seeing that. I mean, even the my sons happen to be uh, surgeons, and, you know, during that very first part where they were, you know, stopping elective surgeries, they didn't have the uh, uh, the uh, ability to even have beds for people. They saw, you know, some of this situation. We're seeing that. Um, we're see, hearing stories of people not going to that doctor or not having a place to stay when they get there. I think it's really important, you know, to to remind people you need to go get your vaccine in this situation. It protects you and your family, and it protects our communities. Um, and then, you know, the the toll on human health um, is tremendous in this situation. And um, okay, I, I want you. Hang on, hang on. I want you to know I'm not an anti-vaxer. In fact, I I had both doses of vaccine. I've not yet gotten the booster. But help me wrap my head around this. How does a vaccine? that was designed for the original COVID-19 and not the variants we are dealing with now, how is that going to make a real difference as far as my ability to fight off COVID in the future? Well, I mean, if you look at the flu vaccine as well, so um, we don't know yet uh, how effective our current vaccines will be against even Omicron. There will be some effectiveness. We do know that because what they are, what, what the current vaccine is, is it's a, you know, it, it's looking at that spike protein on, you know, the virus. And so when it's looking at that spike protein, even though there will be some changes on that, it's still going to have some effectiveness. And that happens with the flu vaccine, the other vaccines that are out there over time, you sometimes have to look at things to maybe modify it. So okay. knowing well, most, that most years, most years, the flu is what, about 25 to maybe 35 percent effective. Should we expect the same kind of numbers from from booster shots? We don't know yet. I mean, that's that's mm. the problem um, is that we just don't know yet. OK. All right. Well, like I said, it, it, it probably couldn't hurt. But is it fair? And again, I know I sound like I'm picking on vaccines, but is it fair <laughs> to call it a vaccine? Is it fair to call it a vaccine? When the life, lifespan seems to be at, at the best six months and you have to get it all over again, wouldn't it be more fair to call it a flu shot? I mean, the flu shot is a vaccine. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a technical uh, terminology. You know, what really is a vaccine? Um, the flu shot actually is a vaccine because what it does is it stimulates the immune system to produce antibodies against the virus. And so um, that's exactly what we're doing with the COVID vaccine as well. Yeah, I think we just like the vaccines that are permanent. <laughs> we like the, you know, I everybody like, wants it one and done. <laughs> that's it, baby. I want it one and done. All right, the, 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 the Biden administration has put in some new rules as it relates to Omicron and how it's going to impact things. We know that there are going to be new rules when traveling. Um, they may get, they, we'll see how draconian they get, but they, certainly if you're traveling to a foreign country, you know, we're talking about testing and all the things that go along with it. And now we're talking about for people traveling here, including Americans from overseas, they're probably going to end up having to undergo testing. Uh, they're going to require your insurance company to pay for your at-home COVID test. Um, they're also going to encourage, obviously encourage people to get the booster shots nothing mandatory mm -hmm. there yet and your your employer is going to be asked to give you paid time off to get your booster shot um are when we look at what's going on um here in this country and how many people are participating in getting getting the vaccine and and all the things that go along with it the the thing that strikes me that's missing uh, patty olinger is is that we don't we aren't we aren't seeing this in other countries um if if the idea here is to try to eradicate um, COVID-19, which I'm not quite certain we'll ever be able to do, it's pretty difficult to do when it's a worldwide disease and there are parts of the world that just don't have anything to fight it. That I mean, that's a very good point. I mean, uh, there are some other countries, if you look at, for an example, Australia, um, that really do have some very, very strict rules in place um, with regard to, you know, access to the country, vaccination, uh, wearing masks. 
and and look things that we hear but then there are other countries out there that just do not have the resources that some of the more developed countries have to be able to even get the vaccine out to the public and so you know those are the challenges from an international health regulation standpoint and you know and just a public health standpoint that we're all facing and which is you're right that's going to make it even more difficult to get rid of the virus all right patty here's something i bet you know a ton about and you can help us with best ways to boost your immune system because it seems to be that no matter whether you're getting shots or you're not getting shots boosters or you're not getting boosters the best thing you can do for yourself is to build up your immune system Oh, absolutely. I mean, and that's with everything is stay healthy. I mean, one of the things I think that we're seeing is that importance of how do we stay healthy and how do we, as employers, how do we make sure that our facilities are healthy, you know, facilities, whether it's, you know, and part of that, and this is, I think, one of the things that people are concerned about is that mental health part, too. You know, we used to talk about in the very beginning of the pandemic, we're going to do social distancing. And, you know, a lot of us are trying to shift that to physical distancing or just, keep, you know, watch your space, <laughs> you know, if you're in crowded areas. Because that social distancing thing is a really important thing. And people people need to be social. We're social beings. And that's something that we have to figure out how we can continue to be social beings and yet stay healthy and, you know, um, it, it used to be, you know, the freshman 10, and now, you know, you hear people talk about the COVID-19. <laughs> Which is um, one of the worst things you could do, right? That's one of the worst things you could do is to gain Absolutely. weight. Absolutely. Yep. You know, we need, to, that we we need, haven't... To, need to stay healthy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it, it, it's mind-boggling to me that, uh, that the CDC hasn't said a word about putting on weight. Dr. Fauci hasn't said a word about putting on weight. Maybe they should be talking about that as much as they're talking about this other stuff. Well, it's one of the, the, you know, the factors of, you know, people that are very vulnerable, you know, underlying medical conditions and including, you know, the obesity aspect of, of being vulnerable. Yeah. Well, Pat, hey, Patty, thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it very much. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep working on it. I'd like to say we'll never have to talk about this again, but something tells me we will. <laughs> well, you have a great day.